Okay, that being said, let's go ahead and turn it on. I have mine preset for the maximum amperage. Uh, it's, it's supposed to go to five, goes a little bit over actually. And being at 3.7 is really good. So if we kind of look over here, you can see it is working really nicely. So now I just have to leave this for a little bit. Um, there's a website I will show you guys later too. Uh, on the website, you're able to input how much salt you put in your solution and it will calculate based on the, the amperage that you're putting into the solution about how long it'll take for your cell to finish. Um, so I'll show you guys that on the website, but I'll show you guys another way that I just came up with to determine how close it is as you're going without having to rely on those, the math and calculations. Cause that can be really hard to do in an amateur cell with a lot of variables that would inhibit efficiency. I think most homemade cells are probably 40 to 60% efficient, assuming they're not pH controlled. So I'll get into that a little bit more later. It's best to do this in a garage or outside because of the chlorine that comes off. It only comes off toward the very beginning though. Uh, the pH will gradually rise. It'll become a lot more alkaline. And as it becomes more alkaline, less chlorine will escape to the point where you can't really notice it at all. But these first few steps will be a little bit intense. So it's good to do it in a little bit more airy environment. Oh, this could be fun to point out too. This is actually my sodium chlorate crop from the last time I did it. Got quite a bit of chlorate. Like a good bit. Uh, it's actually mixed with a lot of perchlorate. So I was a couple of days late in harvesting it. But oh, it's pretty good. Hopefully I can get that batch again and then I'll combine both of these two because they're both very soluble and then we can start a perchlorate batch. Okay, it's been about three days now and you can see the voltage has risen quite a bit and the water level has also decreased. So this is where we actually got to add a little bit more salt in it. We don't have to, but if we get enough evaporation and as the process continues, uh, we can increase the concentration enough to actually have some sodium chlorate uh, come out of the solution there at the bottom. But it's, it won't happen unless we add a lot more sodium chloride to it, or unless we boil the water down to half or something. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and add some more now to keep the chloride level lower. And I'm also going to show you a trick of if we can see if perchlorate is being formed in the cell yet, because it goes from chloride chlorate perchlorate. So I'll go ahead and show you. A word of note that might be important to know is this solution, after it's been run for a couple days, actually contains a lot of hypochlorous acid. And that's also known as bleach. So you can kind of see the off yellow color to this. I'm gonna put it here. It looks, it's like almost white compared to like, that. that's just salt and water. It's a little bit yellow. So if that gets on your clothes, it'll absolutely bleach it. So be a little bit careful not to spill any of that on you. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to be able to check a little bit to know what's inside of your cell. Kind of hard to know exactly what's in it without doing some like titrations or something else. But uh, we go ahead and have this. Actually, I'll put some gloves on. Okay, I'm back with my gloves on. Um, yeah, important safety thing to know if you mess up one time really bad in chemistry, that might be the end of your chemistry hobby or career for the rest of your life. So safety first. Got my glasses on, got my gloves, all that jazz. We should be ready to go. So I'll go ahead and pour a little bit in here. That should be enough to work with for now. Let's put that one on there. So, we have about 270 milliliters of our cell solution here. It's only burned for three days, so it probably doesn't have that high chlorate content, if at all. So, take your attention now to a hydrometer. 
This is just like a fancy tool to do this. You can do the same thing just by carefully measuring how many milliliters are in the solution and taking accurate weight measurements, just like density measurements. Just like a fancy tool to do it. So I'll go ahead and plop that in there. You can see we are at get that float in the middle. One point two five maybe two six seven. So a little bit more than salt concentration. I started out with a con or saturated salt solution, which is about one point two. But this is a little bit more than that, so you can see that we're actually probably forming some chlorate in there at this point, which is a really good sign. All right, and then just before we set this cell back up to let it run a little bit longer, I've got a few more tests I'm going to do just to kind of get a feel for where we're at right now. So this is a pH meter. You can buy them on Amazon for pretty cheap. So as, as this is a non-pH controlled cell, you should expect it to be quite high. 11.34, pretty high pH, well, as expected, but it doesn't hurt to get more measurements on things in case things change that you don't know about. And then lastly, I'll be doing a methyl blue test. So methylene blue, something you can buy on Amazon for just 10 bucks. That's all I bought this one for. And this is able to test for perchlorates. Now, I don't expect that there'll be perchlorates in there quite yet, as it's only been running for three days, like I said, and the density hasn't even risen that much. So I think there's probably not a very high concentration of chlorate quite yet. But and I'll show you anyways. I'll do a methyl blue test to show you what it looks like when the solution doesn't pass this uh, methyl blue test. So I'll go ahead and put some in here real quick off camera. Okay, I've poured a little bit in here now. Um, you can see it's just a little bit, you don't need that much to test in it. Let's take a drop of methyl blue and put it in there. And as you can see, the drop was not super solid and it turned blue. So that means there's no perchlorate in it. When the drop does have perchlorate in it, oh, I wish I could show you my last batch. The drop is very solid. It doesn't spread out, doesn't diffuse across the water that easy, and it turns purple. So purple just means that the methyl blue has been oxidized by the, by, by the perchlorate. It doesn't get oxidized by the chlorate very well, or uh, hypochlorous acid, any of that. So it'll stay blue. But when there's perchlorate in it, it'll turn purple. And then that's how we'll know when our cell has turned to a perchlorate cell, meaning that there's about 10% chloride content left in it which is then when it really starts to damage your anodes here pretty bad. That's when you can add either more chloride, you can stop the cell and pull out your chlorate, and then do another batch starting from 100% chlorate to go to perchlorate without having to risk damaging your anodes. So I just wanted to show you that test. Now to know what it looks like when it fails. That way when we do actually pull perchlorate, you'll notice a difference rather than being left in the dark if you decide to do this on your own. All right, and then just lastly, before we move on to uh, probably like a week later when we have perchlorate in, and I'll cut to that, we will just top up with some more saturated sodium chloride solution. You can see how it kind of looks like there's oil in it. Just means that there's different densities. Kind of good uh, thing to know. I think Nerd Rage pointed that out. He's a really smart guy, so. Definitely watch his video if you're planning on making potassium chlorate rather than sodium chlorate. I just did the sodium chlorate video to complement it as I haven't seen that many sodium chlorate videos out there. So then I'll just go ahead and screw this on. All right, everything is hooked up, ready to go. Anodes were looking pretty okay. They're pretty durable things. And then, spilled a little bit there. My bad, I'll go ahead and start it up. You can see the voltage has dropped a good bit. Drop 0.2, I think, which is good. It means that the chloride uh, level has gone up and the conductivity is better. It'll rise a little bit more as the new solution heats up to a higher temperature usually is easier for electricity to go across. And then, sweet. 
we will just let that be for now. Okay, it's been running for a good week and a half now. Should have perchlorate in it, I believe. So let's go ahead and test it. Oh, you can see a tiny bit of purple. That's blue mostly. Jeez, why is this not making perchlorate? Okay, it's been good couple days later. I had to turn it off for a little bit during the Christmas season. Uh, but I turned it back on and I think we probably have some perchlorate now. So we can see the voltage has risen quite a bit here as the resistance of the cell has grown. It's the chloride levels have dropped. So let's go ahead and turn that off. Okay, and let unplug these. And so now, got some methylene blue up here. Well, let's do the perchlorate test and see if it turns purple. If it turns purple, that means it's been oxidized and it has perchlorate in it. If it stays blue, then that means it's just chlorate still. <clears throat> okay, got our spoon here. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and scoop a little bit into there. I'll probably do this off camera because it's pretty hard to scoop it in while holding the camera. All right, so for the test, <clears throat> we're just gonna drip it in here. Um, over here, I've got another couple batches of sodium chlorate, um, all dissolved. I'm gonna purify those, and in addition to this one, so we can make a big batch of sodium perchlorate. Uh, let's just go ahead on with this one. I'm just gonna take one drop, put it in. Oh, it's not focusing. Okay, so it's kind of hard to see. It definitely looks very purple to me. I don't know why the camera's not quite catching it. It, like, is very... It looks blue on camera. I can't describe it, but it's definitely purple for me. Maybe I'll take a picture and put it on the video. But since we finally reached purple now, we can go ahead and cut this. And we can move on to the chlorate reclamation steps. And I'll put the graph on the map to show kind of where we are in the chlorate production.